small in, in, in objects will go and further that small objects can be removed by increasing the bars and decreasing the size of the gap so that even the small particles can be collected whereas grit and small pebbles and stones and silt particle will still go along with the water which can be removed by grit removal chamber or sedimentation tank right what is sedimentation tank there is a big tank where we store the water and allow the water to stay for some hours so that no velocity of the water will develop or will present and the particles will obey the Stokes law. Stokes law means says that the size and density of the particle will increase the gravity and that will settle down at the base very quickly. Right. So in that way, the particles will settle at the base and we can remove that uh, particles from the base. Right. And still further, we can remove by the, I mean, uh, uh, aeration right we do aeration so that all the particles which they adhere to the air bubbles right they develop buoyancy and float at the top and form a scum on the top of the said tank that can be removed mechanically and now that uh, the particles which are unsettled or which cannot go along with the air bubbles will still remain in the water that can be removed by addition of a coagulant right so what is a coagulant students can anybody answer what is a coagulant students are you there with me say yes yes right yes, so coagulant is a chemical which disperses itself into a unimolecule small molecule and each molecule will have a zeta potential that is a charged part particle and it attracts the dust particles with oppositely charged and that dust particles will adhere that is one molecule of coagulant will adhere to many molecules of dust and that is called as a flock the dust particles are coming towards each other and they are fixed to a coagulant molecule first what we need to do is add coagulant and disperse the coagulant molecules throughout the liquid tank that is called as coagulation once the coagulant molecules are dispersed in the water they collide with dust particles and frequent collisions may cause adhesion of the dust particles to the coagulant molecule that process is called as a flo flock formation flock or flocculation so big size and particles will result and as the size and density of the particle now increased because these coagulant molecule along with many dust particles have adhered and that results in the formation of a big particle. Now as the size and density of the particle has increased, they settle at the base, right? They soon settle at the base and mechanically we can remove these. And the top clear water will be there, which can be filtered by slow sand or rapid sand filter. Slow sand filter means, which is naturally water is allowed to stand on a sand layer. That water will percolate into the sand layer by filter and gets filtered naturally, but it is a very slow process. Rapid sand filter means we allow the water to pressure, I mean, with pressure to percolate into the sand layers and get filtered mechanically and we enhance that right process we speed up the process so we get clean water at the base after the water gets percolated into different sa sand layers this is a fine sand layer coarse sand layer pebbles and stones will be there and at the base we'll have the void space where the water gets filtered, I mean filter water gets collected and that water contains now no particles but the bacteria may be there and that bacteria can be purified by disinfection. What is disinfection means? Students, what is disinfection means? Disinfection, removal of infection. microorganisms. Right, my dear. Removal of infectious causing organisms from the water is called as disinfectious. Right. Infectious causing organism and anti pathogenic, that is disease causing organism. 
say suppose if i give you one spoonful of water containing 100 bacteria different varieties can we identify which one is good or which one is bad and can we identify the infectious and non-infectious? No, absolutely no. So what we do is we clean all the water. We we'll remove all the bacteria. Whether it is infectious or non-infectious, non that is pathogenic or non-pathogenic, we sterilize that water. How to do that disinfection or sterilization of water? By passing the water through the ozone gas or UV light or boiling the water or chemical treatment like by passing chlorine gas or adding ble bleaching powder. When we add this chlorine gas, chlorine gets uh, combined with H2O and forms HOCl that is hypochlorous acid. That acid will bleach the cell wall of the bacteria or any microorganism and kill them and that is how the dis disinfection process is done then the water will become potable drinkable quality water and we will pump that to the households and that is how the water treatment is done water this is raw water treatment this is primary treatment technique next waste water coming out of the industries or residential house that is sewage water will also pass through the same primary treatment including screening then grit removal then sedimentation then aeration and then addition of coagulants like alum, aluminum sulfate or Al2SO4 taken twice, thrice, 24H2O or ferric sulfate or ferric chloride, any uh, this, uh, what we say, the uh, uh, coagulant will be added and uh, the base, the same thing, my dear. Here at the base, the sludge or slurry will form. Same thing forms here also. This is a tank representation. This is only a diag, I mean, uh, uh, a, pic, a simple picture representation, right? This is how a clarifier, secondary clarifier tank will be there after aeration. That is, I mean, uh, addition of coagulant and thorough coagulation, mixing that liquid, flock formation will occur and all the flock sediment will uh, settle at the base, which can be removed by a mechanical a slide i mean uh, something like a conveyor belt a slide will be there which will wipe out all these uh, sludge settled at the base and will collect from one pipe and will remove and at the top the clean water will be there which will get collected uh, into another tank where disinfection is done same process last one is disinfection then the water will be dumped into water bodies like river streams or lakes right now this is waste water which has got the discharge quality only not drinkable quality discharge quality water which can be discharged outside which doesn't contaminate the soil or air or water after disinfection that is what the waste water treatment includes including secondary treatment so this is water pollution control technique. Next is soil pollution. What is soil pollution? Can anyone define, students? Can, <coughs> can anyone define soil pollution? Soil erosion of soil, sir. No, soil erosion is removal of topmost layer of the soil is called as soil erosion. Removal of plastic. Right, the presence of plastic is a pollution of soil how plastic can be called as a pollutant what is non biodegradable pollutant? right it is non biodegradable so what happens to that will it soil spoil the soil quality yes sir how it does not decompose in soil okay my dear it won't decompose so it retain in the soil for longer time so what it is interfering with the soil quality Look, look, one thing. When do we call something pollution? When it affects adversely. No, no. When it affects adversely, then only we call pollution. Look, if 10, if 60 students are there in the class, right, it is called a clean class. But out of 60, if one idiot comes and joins the class and disturbs this total class, then we say it is a disturbed class. Right. Right. So if 
something harm is occurring then only we call it is pollution so how does pol plastic harms the soil it is non biodegradable absolutely true yes yes some someone want to answer please go ahead degradation of water sir under ground, ground water level decreases right my dear ground water level decreases right why because of rate of evaporation increases and even the soil moisture decreases because the moisture holding capacity the cementing factor of the soil will get affected because of plastic right Pla plastic is a hydrophobic it doesn't hold the water so how does plastic is interfering this plastic is non biodegradable it won't get degraded but it is deteriorable it gets deteriorated deteriorated ante air pollution lo manam jadavamu the plastic breaks into pieces and becomes very small sized particles called as nanoparticles right very small microscopic particles of uh, divide aipothundi break down aipothundi right all that particles mix with the soil affecting the soil biota biota ante soil materials right which will decrease the water holding capacity of the soil so water holding capacity is, is less means water this, uh, evaporates very quickly from the soil when water evaporates very quickly from the top soil so bottom ground water will also come on to the tap top by capillary action and it will get evaporated and soil becomes very uh, uh, dry right when the soil is dry it is it becomes something like it can be easily eroded right and then it becomes a deserted land right so fertile land will turn into deserted land because of plastic so that is why we say it changes the quality of soil and it uh, doesn't allow the plants to grow because there is no moisture holding capacity so that is why we call that land or soil will not support the growth of plants and uh, no food can be developed that is why we say plastic can cause soil pollution similarly not only plastic even the toxic chemicals from household mana sewage in the uh, household sewage industrial effluents industrial sludge and slurry anything can cause soil pollution right so only the toxic chemicals hazardous can cause soil pollution is it non toxic can cause soil pollution non hazardous like simple water can water cause soil pollution yes or no no answer i got i'm i'm still waiting yes sir yes how acid rain no 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 acid rain is totally different this is what right. what is this can you see the screen salinity and water logging right my dear water logging means what water getting stored accumulated accu uh, inundated in a particular land so excess of water i'll give you a simple example you do one thing you take a pot and plant a plant, uh, plant in your uh, in in that pot and pour limited amount of water how much is suggested by um, botanist right uh, the person who grows the plants right you put that water how the plant will grow keep it in sunlight it grows very well on one day you do one thing you stop the drain hole at the bottom of the pot and put two mugs of the water totally fill the soil pot with the water it it will grow very well because you are putting more water yes or no yes or no no sir the plant will die if we... right my dear plant will die why because water logging has occurred in that pot and it will result in the salinity water logging and salinity will kill the plant what what does it mean excess amount of water can spoil the quality of soil and it can kill the plant right my dear so same thing occurs even if we put more water in the soil the soil gets degraded 
not only the hazardous toxic chemical, even a material which is normally present in the soil, right? If we put more than the required quantity, then that will also cause the soil pollution. So that is what soil pollution is. Any material present more than the required quantity and it affects the quality of the soil, that causes soil, soil pollution. What is the quality of soil? Productive capacity, production, fertility is the quality of soil. If that fertility is lost, soil is degraded. How does that soil pollution occur? Industrial waste, right? Urban waste, agricultural waste, radioactive waste, biological agents, all these can add pollution for the soil. We will see each in detail. What is industrial waste and what it makes? Industrial waste will be like the waste discharged from the industries like pulp industry, paper and mill industry, chemical fertilizers, oil refinery, sugar factories, tanneries, textiles, steel, distilleries, fertilizers, pesticides, coal and mineral mining industries, drug glass, cement, petroleum and engineering industries, etc. All these industries add effluent, either liquid or solid waste to the soil if it is not properly treated, wastewater treatment. If they are adding it to the soil, the soil gets polluted, right? What happens to the soil? The chemicals and biological property of soil will get affected. The chemical means the chemical composition of the soil, the nutrients will get affected. The biological, that is bacteria and fungus, which can decompose the waste and add nutrients, fertility to the soil will also get died and that affects the quality of soil. There are urban waste like... Uh, uh, urban waste like garbage waste, rubbish material like plastic, glasses, metals, metallic cans, fibers, paper, rubber, street sweeping, fuel residues, leaves, dead leaves, containers, abundant vehicle and other manufactured, discarded manufactured products. All these will add a lot of waste to the soil. Right. That will even causes the change in the chemical and biological properties of the soil and that affect the soil quality that is urban waste and next agricultural practice can add agricultural waste and even the fertilizers and pesticides added in excess quantity can also cause the soil pollution we have studied in modern agriculture techniques addition of excess amount of fertilizers and pesticides can cause biomagnification and the plant and uh, humans life will get affected right that is what called as soil pollution then radioactive pollutants, that is radioactive pollution released from the waste materials like nuclear waste from uh, these nuclear power plants or even the explosions of the nuclear bombs or nuclear testing laboratories. Right, All these can give out a lot of radioactive waste material which can give the radiations and kill the soil and soil biota and causing the soil pollution. The best example is Hiroshima Nagasaki, since long time, no grass even grows over there where the bomb, atomic bomb blast was occurred, right? Even in this Kurukshetra in India, where Mahabharata has held, people say that nuclear bombs were blasted over there and no grass even grows there, even the red uh, sand is there in that area. So that is what we can say. Radiations can cause the soil degradation. Then how can we control the soil pollution? Simple thing, my dear. The best is proper dumping of the unwanted material. Proper dumping means what? Treating the waste. What is that wastewater treatment technique? Either it could be sludge or slurry or this what we say, water, effluent, liquid waste has to be treated properly and dumped wherever is necessary not unwantedly, I mean, dumped irresponsibly in any land or a water so that it can cause problem. Then instead of using chemical fertilizers and pesticides, we should use bio fertilizers and bio pesticides. And then wherever is necessary, we should go with the techniques called as recycling, reuse and of waste material by which we can reduce a lot of materials, I mean, waste generation. Then the chemicals like DDT, which can cause biomagnification, has to be banned. So this is how we can control the soil pollution. And next one is noise pollution. What is noise, first of all? Can somebody tell me what is noise? 
Yes, my dear students, can can you people tell me what is noise? Yes, students, are you there with me? Just say yes once. Yes, sir. Noise. Yes, sir. Right, right. right. No, uh, the frequency of sound or more it has no right. decibels or. Uh, more frequency okay i agree with you if the sound frequency is more then we call it is noise right so if somebody is playing music right in a music system player or a concept or a music band is played and a person who likes that music comes and says that increase the volume i like this music so does it become noise Yes, absolutely. Even that is also noise. He is enjoying that noise, right? So noise may be disturbing to somebody and enjoyable to somebody, right? Absolutely true. But when that sound is disturbing, then we call it is a noise. And when it is harming, then we call it as a noise pollution, right? If I give a lecture in a, a system, like, I mean, now you are able to hear my voice in your laptop or a mobile by headset or directly, you gain information, you gain knowledge, right, when we discuss. But if I shout the same thing without any, I mean, proper I mean, management of my voice, if I shout at the class, you will get irritated and you'll leave the class, right? Some people will even get disturbed, right? So that irritation, the disturbance is because the sound has turned into a noise. So all the sounds are sounds, right? But the sound which is unbearable to us, maybe it is because of the bad sound or it is because of the more noisy, that is more sound. So then it is called as a noise. How we say more, how we measure it? We measure it with frequency, hertz, wavelength, or simply we measure it with decibels, right? So that is noise, decibels. Sound is measured in the in decibel units, dB, right? So when the sound is beyond 70 decibels, we call that to be noise, right? The music is good, but it is noisy. That means they are playing it a higher frequency or higher decibels, right? So when this noise becomes pollution, when it affects the physical well-being and their environment, does it affect us? We will see that whether the noise will affect us or not. So first of all, what is noise? The sound which goes with beyond the audible range. So what is audible range? Generally, the human conversation goes with 45 to 60 decibels only. So that is our audible, right? Beyond 60 decibels, we get disturbed sound, right? Beyond 70, even people get irritated. Beyond 80, it is harmful, my dear. Be beyond 80 decibels sound or 85 decibels, it is harmful. Then we call it is disturbing or pollution. So what are the, that is sound. What are the sources which can generate the sound? We have plenty of sources like we have street, street traffic. Right, street traffic sounds from cars, buses, horns, pedestrian, ambulance, siren, right? All that can generate huge amount of sound. Then construction sound like drilling and other heavy machinery in operation in the construction area like crane, crushers, uh, then JCBs, RMC vehicles, all that, right? Then airports will generate the sounds while the planes taking off or landing then workplace sounds like when the work occurs like a school or a college or a office there will be huge sound when the people are coming out of the classrooms and then constant loud music or near commercial venues right the commercial venues like shopping complexes people advertise their products by the sound loud speakers or speakers right or a mic they speak in the mics and even the street hawkers Nowadays, they are selling the products with the mics and the speakers, right? So that is also generating this noise. Then industrial sounds like fans, generator, compressor, mills, coolers, uh, ACs, all that, train station traffic, that is train while coming and going, it can give a big horn and even the wheels, engine working of this engine or 
electrical engine vehicles, right? They generate a little bit sounds and then household sounds like television set sound or music playing on a stereo or a computer, vacuum cleaner, fan, cooler, washing machine, dishwasher, lawn mower, then grinders, ACs, right? All other, even the crying of the kids at the home and quarreling of the people in the houses, barking of dogs, cats and other pet animals can make the noise. The machine running of a machineries can also run, make the noise in the household. Then events involving firecrackers and fireworks like uh, opening ceremony of uh, Olympics, many firecracking was done. That can also generate the sounds and even the conflicts, right? Conflicts between the people or uh, regions or countries where gunfires and explosions are wars, right? All that can be done and even the drilling and laying, a, what we say, drilling a bore well can also generate sound. So all that are nothing but sources of sound pollution or a noise pollution, my dear. It is not sound pollution. It is only noise. Noise, it is called when it causes harm or it is, it is not good sound. Sound is not polluted. When sound is bad, it is called noise and that is pollution. Okay. So what happens to with this sound? Does it harm? Yes. It can cause a little bit. I mean, the sounds can cause a temporary problems and a permanent problems. The temporary problems could be because of the sounds having low noise. That is a sound with the uh, less than 80 decibels or above 80 decibels for longer time, like eight hours continuously hearing a sound of 80 decibels can make a temporary hearing impairment. That is, we cannot clearly distinguish between the different small sounds. Having a small decibel sounds cannot be distinguished. That causes and even sometimes it can cause headache or hypertension or increased blood levels, elevated blood levels or increased blood pressure and that is a temporary hearing problem sometimes this sound noise can also cause permanent hear problems like permanent hearing impairment or many other problems like uh, kids hearing a noise of 120 decibels and beyond and adults hearing a noise of 140 decibels and above can cause permanent hear impairment that is the tympanic membrane gets ruptured and that can cause permanent ear impairment in the human beings and even it can cause cardiac elevated blood pressure and sleeplessness that is insomnia or even uh, as, uh, intellectual quality that is, is IQ levels will get dis decreased because of psychological impact dysfunctioning of the psycho psychological qualities of the humans will get affected and even the various cardiovascular dis dysfunctions will also occur because of elevated sounds and people even may, even may die due to cardiovascular diseases when affected with the sound noise pollution and even it can cause psychological disturbance in the people not only humans even animals will get affected because of noise pollution mostly the birds and other animals and even the animals living in the marine like whales sharks and dolphins frequently get affected and their population is getting affected that is decreased because of thousands of oil drills, sonar, seismic survey devices, coastal recreational watercrafts and shipping vessels and crews are working there generating huge noise can affect the feeding and uh, reproductive communication of the animals like whales, dolphins and uh, other animals are getting affected because their pattern and the migration routes are also depends on their communication habits, right? And that is what getting disturbed and their population is getting affected. And even sometimes the fish and other animals even appear to be died, at, suddenly died in a water body because of a hemorrhage, a brain hemorrhage. That is a, a rupture of the blood vessels, right, and causes death in some of the, I mean, uh, seashore. We see it often because of the sound pollution only because people blast the bombs in the water for testing or for acquiring the fish, right? So all these and even the plants will get affected because of sound. That is another theory. I will discuss that whenever time permits, right? So that is apart from the syllabus and 
how can we control this noise pollution? The noise pollution can be controlled at two places. One is at the source of noise generation and at the receiver end, right? The receiver end, that is ourselves, how we can get rid of noise if we are not able to stop them to generate the noise. What simple thing we can do is put a earplug in our ears so that we can get rid of the noise and we can save ourselves. If no earplugs are available, we can even put two fingers in our ears and we can stop the sound or a cotton or any other cloth material can also be plugged in the ears, right? So that is how we can minimize the effect of noise pollution at the receiver end. How about the source end? The source end, the machinery which generates huge noise has to be frequently lubricated and maintained properly or a silences to the vehicles should be fixed so that the noise pollution can be reduced. But if even after that the machinery is generating noise pollution that can be kept in a separate cabin constructed with an acoustic material. Acoustic material means which can absorb the sound and will not, will not allow the sound to travel long. And even the instrument can be kept in a vacuum chamber so that no media, air present, no sound can be traveled. Bell jar experiment and that is how the sound can be, noise pollution can be minimized, right? And uh, especially students, I mean children, uh, uh, I mean, listening prolonged use of earphones uh, at elevated sounds like uh, more than 80 decibels can car, cause temporary hearing impairment. So be careful with that. The next topic is thermal pollution, right? What is thermal pollution? Students, can, can I get the answer from you people? What is thermal means? Thermal and TNT. Students, are you there with me? Yes, sir. Yeah, right. Thank you. Thank you for responding. Thermal heat. and thermal means heat. Heat, heat. Right. Thermal pollution means the water getting heated upon and that water is dumped in a water body causes the temperature, raise of temperature of the water body affecting the aquatic living beings is called as thermal pollution. Thermal pollution is defined as a sudden increase in temperature of a natural water body which may be ocean, lake, river or a pond by human influence, not naturally. Does it occur naturally? Thermal pollution? Thermal conduction will occur but not pollution. Why? The water gets heated upon naturally in hot springs or natural geysers where volcanic eruption occurs in a water body. There, the water warms and that is a natural process, what we call natural geysers, but a slight SOx pollution will be generated. A small amount of sulfur dioxide will be generated over there, but it doesn't harm the environment. It is a natural geyser, right? But due to human influence, if this occurs, that is causing a problem, which is called as thermal pollution. This normally occurs when a plant or a facility takes in water from a natural source and puts it back with an altered increased temperature. What is the normal temperature of a water body? It is normally less than room temperature. In our locality, if the room temperature is 25 to 27 degrees, the uh, water body temperature will be less than 20 degrees Celsius. So this less than 20 degrees Celsius temperature of the water body, if suddenly raised it to 75 degrees centigrade, that is called as thermal pollution. How does it occur? by the contamination of water. Water has been added, pollution, right? How it occurs, the water pollution? Or thermal pollution occurs because of water as a coolant. When water is used as a coolant, coolant and anti cooling agent. That is uh, when the boilers or uh, nuclear reactors or, uh, or distilleries or any power plants, when the temperature has to be maintained at a particular level, if the temperature of that boiler or reactor is increasing, they have to cool it down. So how do they do that? They use a, a free of cost material in the nature that is water and pour that water on that distillery or a boiler or a reactor so that the temperature of the reactor will be conducted to the water and temperature of the reactor will be maintained at a required constant whereas the water temperature increases because water is getting conducted with the temperature of the reactor this hot water 
instead of properly treating it, if directly dumped into the lake or a pond or a river or a stream or an ocean, right, it causes increase in the temperature of the water body and that causes thermal pollution. It may also even occur because of soil erosion. Soil erosion may cause thermal pollution. That is two things, my dear. That is when the soil is added, the silt is added to the water, at the sediment, the silt will deposit by increasing the water level upward. The water becomes shallow, right? When sediment is getting deposited at the base, soil silt, the water level becomes thinner, right? It becomes a shallow water body, so it gets uh, exposed to the sunlight and it gets heated upon soon, and then it becomes a thermal pollution. And one more thing is, when the soil particles the silica, the stones are added to the water. The stone is a very good conductor of heat. It becomes very hot in the sunlight and it conducts temperature to the water and water gets heated upon because of presence of the stones in the water. And that causes the raise in the temperature of the water body and the thermal pollution will occur. And one more thing, the last um, thing, uh, the one more factor which causes uh, Thermal pollution is deforestation. That is removal of trees and plants. Remove the shade and there won't be any uh, lower absorb materials to absorb temperature and um, minimize the temperature of that area. So the temperature raises very quickly and water becomes hot and heated upon and that becomes thermal temperature. And the last factor is the runoff water from paved surfaces like if we have a road network like bitumen road or cc road or or a paved uh, footpath where tiled footpath is there if the tiled footpath is very hot because of exposure to sunlight and if water flushes on that water becomes hot and if that water gets deposited in the water body the temperature of the water body will also raise right so this is how thermal pollution will occur. What it causes? It causes two things, my dear. Thermal pollution will cause harmful effect called as thermal shock or thermal enrichment. What is thermal shock? Thermal shock means what will be the normal temperature of a water body below 20 degrees centigrade. And due to thermal pollution, if this temperature raises to 70 degrees centigrade or 75 degrees centigrade or sometimes more than 100 degrees Celsius suddenly, my dear. So when these cold-blooded aquatic plants and animals live in that cold temperature, suddenly subjected to hot temperature, they go with a sudden shock. They get a shock treatment and that they die due to sudden change in the environment called as sudden shock or thermal shock. So that is called as thermal pollution effect. And one more is thermal enrichment. and Thermal enrichment means, enrichment means what? Increasing, enriching means what? Increasing, enhancing is called as enrichment. So this temperature when not suddenly, slowly raises in a water body. That first few days it will be 20 degrees, then few days 25, then few days 30, 35, 40. So that slowly when the temperature is increasing, when the temperature increases, what happens? The rate of reaction increases, right? We have studied how to increase the rate of reaction by slightly increasing the temperature or adding a catalyst. We have discussed it in, I mean, you might have studied it in 10 plus 2. So by raising slowly temperature, the rate of reaction increases. What is the rate of reactions occur? What reactions occur in the natural environment? The biochemical reactions called as a metabolic activity is right. The plants and animals which grow in the water will start growing at a faster rate. So there suddenly increased growth of algae will occur and all the algae will cover the surface of the water resulting in algal blooms. Right. When the algal bloom that is all the surface of the water body will cover with the algae, no sunlight will go into the deeper section. And all the plants and animals which need sunlight will die. And that dead material act as a poisonous material and starts killing the plants. And totally all the plants will also die in the water body. And then that what dead material start accumulating dust and will get converted into a solid mass right? called as a quagmire. And then the totally the water body will turn into a land mass 
which is ecological succession we studied in ecology ecosystems right so this is called as eutrophication excess of nourishment right because increased temperature causes hatching of the uh, eggs right increase in metabolic activity the eggs of the egg larvae i mean this uh, fish eggs and other insect eggs in the water body will hatch sooner so hatching sooner means within their gestation period they will hatch but embryos are not totally developed because the total gestation period has not completed so once the embryos uncompletely developed in an uh, immature um, uh, em embryos coming to the water body they are adding all the egg material what is the egg material it contains fats and albumin yolk and albumin are nothing but fat and protein which are nutrients added to the water body that is what eutrophication so that's how the water body will die causing eutrophication which is thermal enrichment and that is how the water body will get spoiled because of thermal pollution not only the spoilage but sometimes even this thermal pollution can enhance the growth of plants and aquatic animals right like in cold countries where the summer period will be small there if this hot water from the industry is supplied to an area and the warming of that area is done like uh, aquarium warm water i mean the uh, sea animal like fish are grown in a warm water their metabolic activity will increase speed up and their growth rate will increase and even if this water is poured in a nursery the plant growth can also be increased so that can also enhance enrichment of the growth rate will increase in the cold in countries and the one more thing is whenever the temperature of the water raises the dissolved oxygen content will decrease what is dissolved oxygen the oxygen which is present in the water in the form of dissolved condition is called as dissolved oxygen how does water gets this oxygen when the plants grow in the oxygen they do photosynthesis and they take co2 and add o2 to the water so that o2 will get dissolved in the water and retain in the water and normally there will be 6 to 7 mg per liter or a ppm parts per million of a devo will be there in the water and this decreases while we warm the water when the temperature of the water increases at a rate of 6 degrees centigrade 1 mg per liter of do will get decreased right so at around 36 degrees centigrade 0 mg per liter of do will be there in the water so what happen if there is no oxygen in the water all the aquatic animals which depend on the oxygen of the water right respiratory will die soon and then all the dead material will add to the water causing the nutrient source organic content which results in the eutrophication of the water body so that is also causes eutrophication due to thermal pollution how can we control thermal pollution simple thing instead of throwing this hot water into the water bodies we need to cool it and then add it but how can we cool it keep the water in the Uh, industry premises in a tank constructing a shallow water body called as a pond a water pond artificial pond or uh, or a cooling tower or a cooling pond and store water for 2 3 days so that naturally they come to the room temperature and then we can dump that water so that is what heated water from the industries can treated before discharging directly to the water bodies heated water from the industries can be treated by installation of cooling ponds or cooling towers towers means what from the top we pour the water in a pond while water coming in contact with the atmospheric air it quickly gets cooled down and the water can be discharged easily and industrial treated water can be recycled for domestic use or industrial heating right recycled and reuse and uh, reuse can minimize the wastage of water and this water can be used for flushing the toilets in that area i mean the uh, colonies or quarters where the industry establishment has occurred or even this water can be used for reused for uh, any requirements other requirements like flushing the toilets or cleaning the floors right or even artificial lake can be constructed and water can be stored 
from one end and from other end it can be drawn so that is how we can reduce the uh, temperature and contamination of the water bodies with hot water and that it control the thermal pollution right so next topic is solid waste management so almost i mean one hour has completed if you are interested i can continue for some more time students are you interested shall i continue or shall i take the attendance Students, are you there with me? Say yes once. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Why I'm asking is, why am I asking is this question is the last class I kept a message that this class has been uh, suspended and uh, it will be rescheduled because I faced the same problem what I face today. That is, the, there was a laptop problem and I got problem in logging in into the class last Thursday also, that is 12th of August. I kept a message to the students, all the students that the class is suspended. I will take the class afterwards, right? I will reschedule the class or compensated. Today I'm compensating. Today is a holiday, I'm compensating. And my dear students, how many times your class has been suspended till today in this ES subject? Mechanical students, please respond. Did I suspended your class till today any other time except the last week? As far as I can recall, I think this is only once, sir. Right, my only dear. Right. Thank you, my dear. This is roll number 46 who have given answer and I, I feel that rest of the people also have the same opinion but on that day when i kept the message in the google class i mean you are you are uh, what we say that uh, what is that yeah group chat group whatsapp right when i kept a message in the group right so one of the students from mechanical One of the student from mechanical has put the message. I don't want to say his name. I know his number and name also, my dear. Even I can do that saying your name in the class. There will be a very bad opinion about you with, in, uh, uh, with your colleagues, right? If you are listening, mister, shall I repeat the name? The person was from the mechanical. He kept a message in the group, mechanical group stating that you keep on postponing the classes and you don't complete the syllabus. Is that occurred? This is MVSR Engineering College, my dear. You are not studying in a useless college, right? Don't behave like the same college where other people are studying. This is MVSR College and we, we I have 1.5, that is one and a half decade experience we never do that because we are taking salary and salary is only to survive, right? For our survival, not for job, what we are doing, right? My job is teaching and I enjoy teaching. Teaching doesn't mean that just shouting the lesson, right? Shouting a topic, no. I have to explain and motivate you people to follow these rules and regulations and develop an attitude so that the environment will be saved. That is the teaching, right? My dear, this is India where the first university was established in the world, Nalanda University by Chanakya, right? We are the offsprings of that Chanakya and Indians, right? We are not from any other XYZ country. So the one who messaged on that day, I felt very bad because the first day I have postponed this class and the first day I got a message like that in the group, other teachers and other faculty from other college will also feel bad about it. Please, if you want to be the MVSRian, be like us. Otherwise, get rid of this college and get lost somewhere else. This is a message to that person who messaged on that day, right? So now I'm taking class. Excuse me, all of you, to waste your time for this simple uh, talk. He made me to talk like this. 
And I believe that that fellow may be there in the class today. Right. So I will take attendance. Your yeah, class, I will stop the session here. This is compensated class of mechanical. Today's uh, today's twenty first, right? August. Students, are you still there with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, ma. Right. Excuse me, ma. I don't feel bad. Okay. Look, I have to show my grudge. Right. I'll get frustrated because I'm an old guy, young like you people. Where who will feel very bad? I felt very bad with the attitude of that guy. Look, right? I have taken class from 3 30 to 4 30. I will write PM because I got the same problem today also, but I could rectify. Big students, we are not so tech savvy people, right? We are not adopted to the technology things. So on that day, same thing had happened. I have to suspend the class immediately. He put that bloody message. I felt very bad. If it, hap it, if it happens regularly, then you can respond. I mean, you can sh show your I mean, grudge like that. But for the first time, you should not react like that. So I'm writing the number of students who are present in the class. 